After the success of the last Stirling engine uh, that I built, I've decided to build another Stirling engine, um, but this time trying to keep it uh, a bit smaller, a bit more powerful, um, and also simplify the design a little bit. Right, I've just taken delivery of the new lot of laser cutting I've just had done. This is hopefully going to turn into a Stirling engine over the next few months. I've spent about three or four months um, getting the designs um, something like it, so hopefully everything fits together fine. I'll just give you an outline in a minute of what I'm trying to achieve. So the basic design brief is I want to keep things simple. Um, simplicity is king as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm always striving to make things um, simpler and easier. Um, the other thing is no machining. I've obviously got the capabilities um, to get machining done and do machining, um, but I always like to sort of um, I like sort of basic uh, concepts that can be achieved with uh, the minimal of tools for some reason. Um, I think I might have a slight obsession with uh, simplicity and basic sort of stuff, but there you go. Um, the other thing I want to achieve is an engine that produces over 500 watt. Um, if my calculations are correct, then this can be achieved. Um, I'm hoping it would be a lot more than that, but 500 watt seems like a, a comfortable benchmark, hopefully. <laughs> but we shall find out in the coming months when I've uh, put the engine together. So the basic uh, blueprints of the design. So here we're looking. Um, we're looking. So this is the uh, crank shaft here, um, and this is a flywheel here, and this is a flywheel here. Um, this also doubles up as the crank as well. This is um, this is obviously uh, positioned in such an orientation which is incorrect because the crank would normally be a 90% phase difference uh, from the hot side to the cold side. Um, also on this flywheel, there will actually be a balance weight as well to try and balance out this fairly large piston, which is about a foot long. Uh, yeah, so this piston is a 140 millimeter stainless steel pipe, which is externally sealed with leather seals here. Um, and it is aligned in the, uh, the cylinder with this, these um, these bits here. This is actually a PTFE rod, which I'm hoping to use to create a non-friction sliding surface within. Uh, moving up to the top, uh, this side is the cooling side. Uh, so this is a heat exchanger actually. And this is a the hot heat exchanger. And across the top here is the regenerator. So the working gases are gonna be passing backwards and forwards as the engine runs. So this is a side profile of the engine. So you can see the flywheel here, uh, the connecting rod going up here. This is inside the piston. It's like this webbing type of fare. Uh, this is required to get the con rod, connecting rod a little bit lower so it creates clit, so I've got enough clearance with this skirt of the, the piston here. Um, this thing here is the furnace. Now actually, we're looking at this sort of end on actually. This is a, a basically a rocket stove, a J rocket stove, um, attached to the side of the Stirling engine. I'm hoping this will create a bit more of efficient burn, uh, a bit more temperature, um, and also be a bit more efficient in it, its use of heat which is going to go all the way up here and through the hot heat exchanger here and up the flue pipe there. And that is that. So what we got here is basically a Stirling engine kit. Once this is all assembled together, we should have a Stirling engine that creates over 500 watt. I'll just take you through all the different bits a minute. Right, so in no particular order, I shall quickly go through all the bits and bobs we have in front of us. 
so these things here are flattened pieces of stainless steel pipe and these are going to make up the heat exchangers these are for the cold side these ones are for the hot side the reason I've used this method of doing it, it's the cheapest method to buy a heap of stainless steel with a huge amount of surface area and it fits in quite nicely with the design. These tubes here are the cylinders um, and within the cylinders are the pistons here. These are going to be a displacement type piston so they will slide in there like that, displacing the air. Those two big tubes at the back there will make up the flue. There's two millimeter panels here. Um, actually, that's a three millimeter piece. That's the base. Uh, that's the door. And these will make up the rocket stove furnace that will power the Stirling engine. There's the bits and bobs here. Just various brackets and stuff like that. So here we got some bearings. These are the press steel type, where the bearing is clamped between two pieces of steel. Uh, we got some half half nuts here, or half um, what do we call them? Um, they're a half, they're a boss, basically a threaded boss that we're going to weld in place. Got the leather seals. I cut these out the other day while I was looking for something to do, I'm waiting for all the other bits and bobs to turn up. So those two seals are ready to go. The good thing about this engine is hopefully we will only ever need two lever seals for it, which is a, a bit more economical. These are uh, clamping elements. I'm using these to attach the flywheel um, stroke crank um, to the shaft, the crank shaft here. Um, these are used in industry um, now quite often instead of having to machine a keyway into a shaft um, certainly when the facility is unavailable uh, this is a door for the furnace it's a gravity fed furnace these pieces are part of the, the piston assembly right at the back here we have flywheels I'm quite happy with these because this is a very convenient way of getting a he nice heavy flywheel for not much money. So these are laser cut out with all the holes ready to go. Like so this is a counterweight to go on one side of the flywheel. This is all the, the six millimeter plate bits and bobs I've got cut out. You will, you will see what that looks like when I put it all together. I'm quite excited because it's, um, it's all come out quite nicely really. So here we got vermic light fire bricks so this is an insulating fire brick um, in my opinion this is the most econo economical way to provide fireproof insulation got some fire cement to stick it all in these have come out lovely so these are the connecting rods that connect the pistons to the crank and we move on to the stainless steel bits and bobs of course for the um uh the heat exchanger or the heater um it needs to be made out of stainless steel so it doesn't melt basically so one of the bosses will get welded into that this is on the cold side this is on the hot side so notice these slots are the same size as our heat exchanger pieces of metal like that and they'll they slide in there like that um, and also on the other side, you've got the other ones and they slide in like that. Um, obviously, as I build this engine, you'll see exactly how it goes. Um, right. So here I've got a one-way valve, which I had lying around. So that'll suck the air into the engine, but won't let it escape. So we get compression, uh, part of the door bracket. So a few bearings, four bearings, plus those two bearings is the only two bearings on this particular engine which is quite economical really and i think i pretty much covered everything so there you go right so there you go so that's all the um pre-build stuff out the way um in my next videos i will be getting going actually doing some uh, some building so please um 
keep up to date on that because it's uh, all quite exciting. I'm certainly quite excited um, and I've got quite a lot of time invested in this. Um, so I wish you all well and hope to see you next time. Um, please comment uh, whatever you want really. I'm not, I'm not too offended most of the time. Um, and any helpful tips would be uh, most helpful. Thank you very much. Bye.